we are a social enterprise that's working to give thousands of women in Latin America uh, the skills they need to build a career in the tech sector. No, we do this because the tech sector is growing, uh, there's a lot of job opportunities, and it desperately needs not only talent, but diverse talent. No, It's a sector that traditionally has had a very, very small presence of women, and, and it's very important to change that because Technology is used by men and women almost equally, no? And if we if we want that technology to be able to solve for our needs too, we need more women creating technology. Yeah, so it's it's funny because as, as I think it often happens when one starts in this entrepreneurial journey. I didn't start with Laboratoria. Me, my my co-founders and I actually started a software development company before. And we were doing uh, software developments for all sorts of clients and we had to build our own team. You know? and, and that's how we came upon the problem that it was actually hard to find good developers out there. This was in Lima in, back in 2013 and it was almost impossible to find any women. You know? So our, our company started growing and I started becoming more and more of a minority. You know? there, there were no women in our, in our software development team, maybe like we were around 15 people and it was just me and a graphic designer, you know? So, so I started thinking, this is interesting. I, I don't understand why is it the case and I think we can do something to change that. Um, it, it was not only the reality in our company, this is what you would see in any other company doing software, in any software development meetup, in communities. So it was very widespread. Um, and. And I mean, the other thing that I saw that, that was, is pretty unique of the world of software is that it's a space where uh, I think traditional education is being challenged in many ways. So half of the developers in our team did not come from a formal five-year degree in computer science. And actually, the best one uh, had learned by himself completely. Others had learned in communities. Others had studied something else and then randomly ended up in, in software. So uh, it had the potential to be a very inclusive space. No? And, and that's when uh, initially to solve our own needs of having more developers and specifically more women developers, we ran a pilot program to see if we could actually prepare in a relatively short period of time of, of six months uh, women to, to, to be ready to start working with us no? and, and that's when we discovered that a whole new world of opportunity and, and Laboratoria was born. Yes, completely. Uh, I think that life skills are, I mean, that what, what people traditionally call the soft skills that are actually the hardest ones to get, I think. So, and, and they will be the most important skills in, in the future, no? So since the beginning, we said it's actually not enough to get someone that knows the technical part. If they're not going to be able to work in teams, if they're not going to be able to communicate properly, to give and receive feedback, it, it's not going to work out. So we designed uh, the learning experience in a way uh, in which the building of those life skills is ingrained in how they learn technology. You know? So we, we have a, a methodology that we call the Agile Classroom. You know? The Agile values of software development are like the, the gold standard of how to develop software. And, and we, we try to bring those to the learning experience. So, so there's a lot of group work. There's a, 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 a focus on continuous retrospective, you know, on thinking what could I have done better. There's a very strong focus on self-learning. Uh, we actually barely have any classes, which at the beginning is always shocking for our students. Now they're like, where's my teacher? What's the lesson? And we're like, mm, that's not how it's going to work here. Uh, because we think that's the way to preparing them holistically to, to really face the challenges of a very competitive sector. Yes, yeah, so we started in Lima uh, and then relatively early on we scaled to, to Santiago de Chile and Mexico City. Looking back, it was probably a very irresponsible decision, uh, but really two of my greatest friends were there and they wanted to, to, to partner with us and see if there was potential for something like Laboratoria there. You know? and, and I think very early on we realized that in any big city, 
that has a growing tech sector and where you have women looking for better opportunity, Laboratoria works. So, so we scaled and, and, and then we continued. No? So now we have five centers, Lima, Santiago, Mexico, Guadalajara, and, and Sao Paulo. And, and I think uh, it's been, of course, challenging because it means a bigger organization. How do we ensure quality and culture and so on? But it's, w it's been amazing. I think it's enabled us to build a program that, that has grown and nurtured from all these different realities. No? And, and, and it has become better with the experience of every single center and every team. And, and I think it gives us as a team, but also our students, our and alumni, the feeling of being part of something big, you know, this is a movement across Latin America that's transforming the sector. Yes, I'm, I'm very excited about that. Uh, we're, I'm going to be talking about the story of how Laboratorio was born, what we do and why it's important. No, I'll, I'll talk a lot about diversity and inclusion and how uh, it's really imminent that we get more women and more, more minorities into building tech because that's the only way in which we're going to make sure that, that we are also part of designing the world's future.